हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु अरोड़ा फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक ऑन द मॉड्यूल ओबेसिटी एंड इट्स इम्प्लीकेशन फिजिकल एंड साइकोसोमैटिक हेल्थ फ्रॉम द पेपर अप्लाइड एंथ्रोपोलॉजी द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द मॉड्यूल आर टू नो एंड अंडरस्टैंड वेरियस आस्पेक्ट्स असोसिएटेड विद ओबेसिटी टू डेवलप and understanding about the anthropometric methods of assessing obesity to understand different non anthropometric methods of assessing obesity to know about the physical and psychosomatic implications of obesity first of all we will discuss briefly about obesity and overweight weight is gained more frequently at certain ages or physiological periods in women this is most likely after the completion of growth at about the age of 20 years during pregnancy and after menopause men tend to gain weight between the ages of 25 and 40 years it has been shown that person overweight as children teenager or young adults are likely to remain or become more overweight throughout life fat accounts for a higher percentage of total body weight in females than in males at all ages body fatness for both sexes increases with age in adult life it increases at a faster pace for men than women yet women at all ages are on the average fatter than men overweight can be defined as the ratio of actual weight to average or desirable weight specific for age sex height and body build an individual may be overweight on account of musculature or bony structure rather than excess fat so that overweight and obesity are not necessarily synonymous obesity is defined as excessive body fatness obesity has always been a major public health problem its prevalence in the world has increased in the last few decades affecting both children and adults in all ethnic groups and populations it is a complex interplay between gene and environment that involves excessive accumulation of fat in body over the past few decades obesity has gained a lot of attention not only in terms of research findings but also due to its epidemic nature that poses a negative risk over health and society though the situation is completely preventable and avoidable but even then it acts as the perpetrator for the incidence of several non communicable chronic disorders thereby overburdening the society with high mortality and morbidity rates multiple factors contribute to the onset and progression of obesity these are lifestyle lack of physical activity overeating or unhealthy eating habits genetic predisposition and family history environmental factors personal attributes lack of will power assessment of obesity let us see how obesity can be assessed since the component of obesity that can be reduced is fat so the determination of relative fatness is of practical significance obesity can be measured in many ways some methods are quite complex such as densitometry or hydrometry or and, and the determination of whole body potassium content others are relatively simple including measurements of subcutaneous skin folds and soft tissue x-rays each method has its own advantages and disadvantages and the appropriateness and scientific acceptability of each method will depend on different situation the assessment methods often measure different aspects of obesity for example total or regional adiposity they also produce different results when they are used to estimate morbidity and mortality anthropometric techniques 
there are various anthropometric techniques of assessing obesity and overweight like body mass index, sur waist circumference, skin fold thickness, waist hip ratio and waist height ratio. Body mass index has traditionally been used to identify individuals who are most likely to be overweight or obese. It is calculated by dividing the weight in kilogram by the height in meters squared. Generally, a high value indicates excessive body fat and consistently related to increased health risks and mortality. The need to have a separate BMI classification was felt when it was found that Asians are at a greater risk of metabolic syndrome at lower BMI. Waist circumference and waist hip ratio provide measure of abdominal adiposity with great ease and reliability as they correlate more closely with abdominal adipose tissue. Waist circumference was developed initially as a simpler measure and a potentially better indicator of health risk than BMI. Waist circumference or minimum waist circumference measures the minimum circumference of the waist between the lower rib and iliac crest where the minimum value is found. Waist circumference is at least as good an indicator of total body fat as BMI or skin fold thickness and is also one of the best anthropometric predictor of visceral fat. For practical purposes, triceps skin fold measurement alone is considered adequate as being simple, reasonably precise and reproducible. People with increased fat around the abdomen or wasting of large muscle groups or both tend to have a larger waist circumference relative to that of the hips. Waist circumference alone, however, gives a better prediction of visceral and total fat and of disease risk than waist to hip ratio. Waist circumference is minimally related to height, so correction for height does not improve its relation with intra-abdominal fat or ill health. People with a large waist are many times more at risk of ill health including features of metabolic syndrome such as diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, etc. as well as shortness of breath and poor quality of life. These increased risks are also apply in people whose BMI is normal but have a large accumulation of fat around waist. However, BMI and waist circumference are collinear, so combining the two measures adds relatively little to risk prediction. The following points should be noted while taking anthropometric measurements. These are weight should be measured by digital scales or a beam balance to the nearest 500 grams. Equipment should be calibrated regularly by standard weights and the results must be recorded in a book. The patient should ideally be waked in light clothing and bare feet, ideally fasting and with an empty bladder. Height is measured with a regularly calibrated stadiometer. Patients or subjects should stand bare feet and feet must be kept closer together. The head of the subject must be adjusted in Frankfurt horizontal plane which is an imaginary line from lower border of the eye orbit to the auditory meters. If a participant or subject cannot stand, for example, is confined to a chair or bed, BMI can still be derived from special equations using arm span or lower leg length instead of height. Waist circumference should be measured between the lower rib margin and the iliac crest wherever found minimum with a horizontal tape at the end of gentle expiration. Waist circumference measurement at the umbilical level is not reliable because sagging of abdominal skin occurs in very obese subjects or those who have lost weight previously. During waist circumference measurement, participant should be asked not to hold in their stomach. 
A constant tension spring-loaded tape device reduces errors from over-enthusiastic uh, tightening during measurement. Triceps skin fold measurement alone is considered adequate as being simple, reasonably precise and reproducible. Obesity can also be measured using non-anthropometric techniques such as densitometry, imagine and bioelectric impedance. Firstly, let us discuss about densitometry or water densitometry. Total body fat was classically measured by densitometry based on the Arch Archimedes principle of water displacement assuming just two body compartments model that is fat and fat free tissue. Under this principle, if two individuals of the same weight on land have different proportions of body fat and lean tissue, the one with more body fat and less lean tissue would weigh less underwater. Densitometry requires underwater weighing facility and is time consuming and expensive. Furthermore, many people would not likely to be submerged in water. Densitometry therefore cannot be used routinely. It also does not indicate body fat distribution. Now let us discuss about body imaging. In the past decade, new imaging techniques such as computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging allow discrete deposits of body fat to be imaged. Specific fat deposits can be measured including the visceral fat deposits. These relate more strongly than subcutaneous fat to metabolic abnormalities. Fat in other structures such as the liver or muscle cannot be quantified easily. Imaging is very expensive and can be problematic for people who are claustrophobic and also carries risk of exposure. Precise and accurate measurements of regional fat mass can be estimated from two-dimensional transverse multiple slices. The fat volume estimated from a single slice based on regression equation can be used to reduce time, cost and risk of radiation exposure for some purposes such as repeated studies in the same patient. Other imaging techniques including dual energy x-ray examination are good predictors of visceral fat but like computed tomography expose subjects to radiation which limits their use in repeated measurements. They were originally calibrated against the gold standard densitometry. Now thirdly, we will study the bioelectrical impedance method. Obese people have increased lean body mass as well as increased fat mass. Bioelectrical impedance estimates total body water, which is a constant component of lean body mass. As this technique is totally based on hydration level of the body, Therefore, estimation of fat mass by this technique may incur relatively more error. It is important to note that the techniques like densitometry, dual energy, x-ray examination, other imaging techniques are not convenient for large population surveys which are required to develop normal cutoffs due to the expenses, time and exposure risk involved. Let us discuss about the effects of obesity on physical health. Increasing body mass along with accumulation of excess fat above the ranges recommended for a particular age group, ethnic group or gender could be very harmful as it not only affects the normal functioning of the body and organs but also acts as a trigger for the development of many other diseases. Based upon different studies and research works, it has been estimated that of all the hypertensive cases, roughly around 30% could be categorized as obese. Increased adiposity, especially related with the abdominal region, has been found to be associated with a large number 
of non-communicable disorders. It predisposes an individual to several health issues such as hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, lipid disturbances, insulin resistance, osteoarthritis, medical metabolic syndrome, respiratory abnormalities and some types of cancer. It affects the homeostatic and fibrinolytic system. Obesity is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease including coronary artery disease and congestive cardiac failure. Visceral obesity is linked with raised incidence of hypertension and anthrogenic lipid profile. Obese people may face abnormal pulmonary function. In obesity, the chest wall compliance diminishes. Respiratory reserve volume and vital capacity also decreases. This leads to ventilation, perfusion, mismatch and hypoxemia. Severe obesity may lead to hypoventilation or the Pickwickian syndrome. Sleep apnea and bronchial asthma are the most common and severe disorders. It leads to adverse metabolic effects on cholesterol, triglycerides, pulmonary and systemic vascular compliance in addition to chronic musculoskeletal problems and infertility. Obesity when combined with diabetes significantly accelerate aging problem. Obesity along with hyperglycemia magnifies the risk for dementia. There is an increase in tendency towards depression and suicide among obese people. Obesity also enhances biliary secretion of cholesterol resulting in higher incidence of gallstone of cholesterol variety. Obesity poses high chances of cancers of liver, stomach, kidney, breast, prostate, uterine and cervix than the non-obese individuals. Obesity has evolved as a drastic threat to public health. It is associated with substantial increase in morbidity resulting from a wide range of comorbid diseases leading to an increased risk for premature death. It also hampers the psychological well-being and overall quality of life. Obesity therefore simultaneously acts as an independent risk factor for the onset of all these health problems. Let us discuss about the psychosocial impacts of obesity. The effects of obesity are not limited to physical health. Obese individuals have to deal with damaging effects of societal bias towards excess weight. Weight bias refers to the negative stereotypes about and unfair attitudes towards those who are overweight or obese. These attitudes can translate into negative behavior towards them including derogatory comments, testing and bullying, and exclusion from societal events or groups. No one is immune from implicit negative attitudes toward overweight or obese condition. Weight bias could be experienced at workplace, social events, or even at home or among family gatherings. Individuals who are subjected to such bias may get involved in unhealthy weight loss practices or disordered eating behavior. Such victims also suffer from lower self-esteem and are likely to undergo depression. Not only this, such people tend to develop tendencies for suicide as they have reduced stress tolerance. Now let's summarize the module. Obesity has gained epidemic nature. Multiple factors contribute to the onset and progression of obesity which are lifestyle, lack of physical activity, overeating, unhealthy eating habits, genetic predisposition and family history, environmental factors, personal attributes and lack of willpower. However, weight is gained more frequently at certain ages or physiological periods. The association of obesity with an extensive range of health risk is a global concern. It is a paving way for a high risk future health and social problems. 
developing nations encounter an ironic condition where obesity and undernutrition are coexisting requiring diverse strategies to combat their health related problems the emerging global economy has led to the shift from traditional diets and physical activity pattern to modern calorie dense diets and sedentary lifestyle because of this change overweight or obesity is evident in all countries across the world regardless of their economic status or ethnic makeup obesity can be measured in many ways some methods are quite complex such as densitometry or hydrometry and determination of whole body potassium content others are relatively simple including measurements of subcutaneous skin folds and soft tissue x-rays each method has its own advantages and disadvantages and the appropriateness and scientific acceptability of each method will depend on different situation the assessment methods often measure different aspects of obesity for example total or regional adiposity they also produce different results when they are used to estimate morbidity and mortality body mass index are calculated by dividing the weight by height total body fat was classically measured by densitometry based on the archimedes principle of water displacement assuming just two body compartment model that is fat and fat free tissue under this principle if two individuals of the same weight on land have different proportions of body fat and lean tissue the one with more body fat and less lean tissue would weigh less under water in the past decades new imaging techniques such as computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging allows discrete deposits of body fat to be imaged specific fat deposits can be measured including the visceral fat deposits these relate more strongly than subcutaneous fat to metabolic abnormalities bioelectrical impedance estimates total body water which is a constant component of lean body mass obesity results in serious physical health and psychosocial consequences that must be addressed promptly and efficiently obesity predisposes an individual to several health issues such as hypertension cardiovascular diseases lipid disturbances insulin resistance osteoarthritis metabolic syndrome respiratory abnormalities and some types of cancer also it affects the homeostatic and fibrinolytic system visceral obesity is linked with raised incidence of hypertension and atherogenic lipid profile in obese individuals the chest wall compliance diminishes leading to ventilation perfusion mismatch and hypoxemia obesity when combined with diabetes significantly accelerates aging problem like dementia it also leads to depression and decrease in overall quantity quality of life obese individuals have to deal with damaging effects of societal bias towards excess weight therefore they may get involved in unhealthy weight loss practices or disordered eating behavior such victims also suffer from lower self esteem likely undergoes depression in addition such people tend to develop tendencies for suicide as they have reduced stress tolerance interventions must be done whereby healthy dietary habits behavioral modification and adequate physical activity should be the main targets thank you